I'm currently hiding amongst the sunflowers for a bit of shade <laughs> to record this intro. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to this week's garden video. We are getting nostalgia. I went through the archives and I had a look to find some really old photos and I'm gonna share my garden journey up until this point. So if you're looking, maybe if you have like a small garden, a small rectangle garden, and if you're like me, you were kind of struggling to fill it out, um, I hope you get some inspiration. And I always say this is, this is how I garden, not how to garden. <laughs> There's a difference, I make mistakes. I have weeds and I have untidy borders. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope you enjoy it and hit the subscribe button so you can follow along on the journey. Sundays I have been popping out some garden videos and then Thursday is more like a home styly video. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So let's go way back to almost the beginning. So I had a little dig back, way back into the archives on my phone and I found some pictures of what my garden was looking like a good couple of years ago. So I had just the back garden was just grass. I had my border in the front and it's actually only in the last kind of year or two years I've proper gotten the concept to kind of planting. So this was my border a good couple of years back. I think this is like 2018. And a lot of the plants I had gotten from my neighbor, some of them were bulbs. I think them Rebecca's were bulbs. I ended up extending this out, which you'll see later in the video. And for my regular viewers, you will now know that this is a lovely, full, juicy border with plants. But you can see, where I was kind of quite amateur, like I wasn't good at, you know, having heights in a border and depth, but I wanted to just share my beginning and my love of pots. <laughs> I ended up killing nearly everything in them pots, but we live and we learn. So I'm taking it way back to not that long ago, this was last year. If you followed me in 2020, I built a pub from an old bed frame. That is a super old video. If you want, you can check it out. But I decided to disband it and I traded my pub for some raised beds. So this was kind of the beginning of getting rid of the rectangle garden shape. So I had gotten my greenhouse last year and that gave me the structure at the end of my garden. This was the best place for the greenhouse. So I kind of had this focal point in the garden that was also functional. So my garden bar was no longer like functional. It was cute, it was a fun project. I learned a lot from it. But I decided to disband it and I got rid of the shelves on the sidewall and I made some raised beds. I got some raised bed kits online from Quick Crop and yeah, yeah, I made four of them, filled them full of soil, and on two of the raised beds, I did loads and loads of spring bulbs, and I had a beautiful spring display with like different daffodils, tulips, all of the spring bulbs, had some alliums in there as well, which I still have some seed heads sitting in one of my beds. So this gave me the option, I mainly have my raised beds for cut flowers. However, I think I am gonna do veg in some of them. Like at the moment I have dahlias and I have sunflowers in them, I have some snapdragons, but I am, I think I'm gonna use one of them for veg as well. because I. I'm growing veg in bags, but I think I'm gonna use one of them, one of the raised beds to grow some veg in it. So early autumn last year, around about September time was when I did this, and it was me just getting the bones of the area that I wanted in the garden. So I had the structure out down the back with the greenhouse, and now I was filling up the rectangle shape and making it less square, I suppose, in the garden. And you'll see later on in the video that I did a second border um, in winter time as well.
as the evenings got darker and we started to roll into winter, a little bit of bling had to be added to the greenhouse just to brighten up my evenings. I do have electricity, I have an outdoor socket in the greenhouse, which is handy. Now, one thing I needed to do, and I got my brothers to help me, this was my first hard landscaping job, and I think we did pretty good, but around this area that I'm raking, I do get a lot of leaves which means a lot of leaf mold can be made. But this was becoming really soggy and the turf or the, the ground was getting slidey, muddy, just a very damp area in the garden. So I decided I wanted to put down some stones in this area, just again, so I could kind of zone off the area, um, but something that would have, you know, just some drain drainage. As I walked to the greenhouse, I wasn't gonna keep ripping up the turf or the grass um, for about three or four months of the year. It's pretty much from October, onwards it was just getting absolutely wrecked so I decided I wanted to do this it was my Christmas present for my brothers I was like can you help me dig up my garden also while we did this job we rented some machines from like my local DIY shop we got like a a turf cutter I think it is, um, lay down some membrane, I used gravel stabilization grids and I laid, I think it was two ton of stones um, that I laid and this has been perfect, it, it solved the problem of the soggy area so it now means like I can have pots around the greenhouse and I'm not worrying about damaging grass and the grass dying off. So this was a fun project to do and do you know what, even though it wrecked my grass for I'd say three or four months, my grass didn't kind of come back normal. I had to use some seed until about late March time but my grass is perfect now and doing a job like this in December was great because as I'm recording this voiceover it's really warm <laughs> and I can't imagine doing a job like this in peak summertime. So yeah, winter gardening, I highly recommend it. Also on this weekend, we dug out my pond. So I want to have like a wildlife pond in my garden and at the moment it has lots of grasses growing in it and there's a pond lily. So I wanted the pond in the garden as just another way to kind of bring in like insects and wildlife and just see what I could attract with the pond. You're such a fragile thing, I know And with the winter comes the ice, the snow But I'm here at all And oh my love Don't worry about the cold just yet the trees haven't started to shed Just feel the summer sun As it warms our bed stepping into early spring and I had to plant a lot of plants. So I had my brand new border that was on the left side of my garden and I also wanted to add some more plants to the front border that I had but here is the first signs of spring in my garden. I did loads of lasagna containers. Um, I think I have a post on lasagna containers on my blog. I'll make sure to pop a link to that if you want to check it out but they were great. Basically these buckets kick off like late January and they flowered and until May because I just layered the spring bulbs and they just kept going so this definitely like I was in the garden early March cleaning up getting the last of the leaves and um, it was just so good to just get outside and it wasn't like too cold either so I think yeah from about like late February March the cleanup had begun there were signs of spring things were starting to kick off So 
apologies for this slightly wonky footage, but I just wanted to share a before of the bed and what it's going to be looking like. If you scroll to the end of the video, you can see what you can achieve in just one year because this was empty um, back in March. And if you go to end my video and look at it now, this is bursting with plants. So I popped in perennials, I planted a magnolia tree, and um, there's lupins, verbenas, of loads of varieties of um, hardy geraniums. And it just gives me so much joy because when I look at it, I'm like, that wasn't there last year. So one thing, I did this year and I started doing it last year but I only realized how good it is for the plants this year was I mulched everything in March now I got a ton bag of mulch and I'm trying to condition my soil because I have in some parts of the garden I have heavy clay and then in other parts it's not too bad there's a bit of grit in it there's a bit of sand so to condition the soil I just mulch it with I think it was fine bark that I use and then on areas of the garden where um, the soil is a bit more poor I had used some well rotted bags of farmyard manure so conditioning the soil one thing I've noticed is I do have a healthier plant this year so it's something that I'll definitely do again like next March um, some people say you can do it in like autumn so kind of like October time but I think what I'm going to do this year is I get loads of leaves so I might even like use the leaves as like a mulch and then come March time put down the fine bark and um, because that will tidy it up as well and any of the leaves I can kind of they look a bit messy I think and then that fine bark of mulch just makes everything look tidy and I love looking at the transformation of the garden from spring when it first started to open to how it's looking now like that border is full of height now and it's just juicy and packed and it's starting to grow so I love how gardening everything just dies and then it comes back in its next season. Two raised beds I now have dahlias in them and it's so cool watching me planting them now and looking at the packets and then I'm actually looking at them now in my garden so I wanted to do a bed for cut flowers of dahlias and they have started to erupt in flower I am delighted to say again you'll see them at the end of the video and so much work actually when I look at this goes on in spring and then it's like you reap the rewards of it in high summertime like in July August September I feel like you kind of just maintain the garden then but yes lots of planting was done so I tidied up pots and containers that I had that had just gone a bit wild they were full of weeds grass random stuff I popped dahlias in here and then I have a bed of sunflowers as well and I also have some snapdragons in the front that replaced the tulips so when the bed of spring bulbs that had all the tulips in them when they went um, and they died off I popped in some snapdragons so I'll have them as a cut flower bed as well I just pulled this footage from an old vlog but I just wanted to show you how tiny <laughs> the plants were back in March April time and how big they can get now so I had gotten some lupins from my friend's dad the tree was looking like a twig I had some perennials that were in pots and I took them out and I popped them into the border there's a couple of delph delphiniums now one delphinium did well and then the other two are just kind of sitting in the soil so I'm hoping next year that they'll you know they'll have a year to kind of establish their root and they'll plant better so 
or sorry, they'll grow better. So over the course of like April and early May, I was just adding to the borders, a perennial here and there, a good old heucheria <laughs> to tidy up a corner, fill up a gap. Um, and I kind of just, I just tackled every wonky pot that was full of weeds, one pot at a time. I think sometimes if you try and do it all at once, it can be a bit overwhelming. So on a weekend, I would just maybe take two or three pots, empty them out, see what was in it, and then repot them up. I also just wanted to share how I try to make my garden accessible to nature. So something I noticed, especially with the new left-hand border becoming like full of plants, that was where the hedgehog gets in and out. Now there's still space for the hedgehog to get in, but to just make my <laughs> garden gay and my garden a bit more accessible, I decided to cut a hole uh, out of the bottom of my garden gay. I popped on a little stencil. Now Blondie uses this the most. Blondie is delighted because she doesn't have to climb up on the wall to jump back into the back garden. She can just go through her own personal hole. She appreciates it very much. It's like a cat flap. Um, but yes, I do have wild hedgehogs that live in our local area. Sometimes they're in my neighbor's garden and they walk so much. Apparently they travel loads of like mileage in a night. So I don't have a big problem of slugs. And although I, I go to bed, I think too early to see the hedgehog, but there is signs of him in the garden and he keeps on top of the pests. So yeah, no slugs for me. Very rarely would I have like really bad slug damage. I get the odd one, but yeah, I decided to make my hedgehog hole to make my garden more welcoming and accessible for them.
So in late spring, you'll notice that some of the tulips are starting to kind of, you know, die off. So there was that transition from swapping out the spring bulbs and bringing colour in front of the greenhouse. So this is why I love that I have the stones there so you can kind of drag your pots around and change them and you don't have to worry about damaging the grass. So I now have dahlias and I have some hydrangeas in pots that I had as well in front of the greenhouse. So once these kind of died off, I brought them to the side. They can go around the back of the greenhouse where no one can see them and I now have I now have like colour from Dahlia. So that was my plan. I was like, okay, what can I have in front of the greenhouse for the later half of, you know, the growing season? So I have Dahlias and they just make me so happy. And I just keep deadheading them so that I can have them until like early autumn. Our autumns are quite mild. So I'm hoping that I should have Dahlias reflowering once I deadhead them until like October I'm hoping but we'll see also this is my bed of sunflowers and when you see the height of the sunflowers now I can't believe how much they're grown So the next area that I wanted to tackle this year was just having a simple seating area and you'll notice my garden, I, I joke with my friend Karen about this, I don't want to waste space in my garden by having like a huge outdoor garden table and chair and lounge set because to be honest I only ever like socialise with maybe three or four people at a time in my garden. So. And then you've got like your house and your kitchen. So I just wanted somewhere cozy, like two seats, a fire pit and sitting in the corner, enjoying the garden. Like I have the, you know, the grass area. So if I do have a larger, you know, garden party and invite more friends and family, I can just put tables on the grass temporarily. Um, but that's why I have like a smaller seating area um, because that's mainly what I do in the garden is just sit on those chairs and just relax reading a book I don't want anything too big and fussy so this corner of the garden was just starting to get I would say like clutter you know the empty pots were piling up and um, I had my niece's playhouse there which is also a DIY and um, I'll pop a link to that if I remember as well um, in the description if you want to check that out so I just needed to clean up this corner so I moved over my olive tree as well and um, that got Mm, a little bit unhappy over winter I left it outside and I think it got too much rain so I've repositioned it to a sunnier spot so I'm hoping my olive tree will be happier so I moved over some pots it took me a while to kind of move things around here I ended up moving the strawberries out of there completely and now they're in front of the greenhouse you'll see that later in the video Also, I picked up my chairs from a guy off adverts. So these chairs, I love them. I've wanted them for ages, but they are so expensive. But I was able to get them for like a third of a price from a guy who was making them and himself and he was selling them on adverts. So I have since painted, painted them in like a white kind of shade and I got myself a parasol. So I went for an Ikea parasol with one of the like cement blocked bases and it opens up from the side, which you'll see. I didn't want to get a big gazebo because my garden is quite small and a big gazebo might just take up a lot of space and I love that I can just pop up this parasol and I can take it down really easy literally by the wind of a handle and I have some shade because I don't have 
shady seating area well I do now but I didn't have one also here is just a little progress of how this was looking I think this was early May so I think the first Lupin had opened and then it was a good while before the rest of them opened and this border and all the geraniums has just filled out so much and um, which you're gonna see in a few minutes you're gonna see how it's all looking now Okay, present day, we are in a very hot July. <laughs> but everything is looking full. One thing I will say is because it's been really warm, I have been trying to keep on top of the watering, but some plants are showing a little bit of sign of stress. Like good old hydrangea Annabelle. She's very thirsty and you can hear that crunch. It is due to rain today, I hope it does, but the grass is starting to get a little bit fried. So um, I have some hardy geraniums. These are my favourite, especially when it comes to cottage gardens. I love the one that I have down here. Actually gone to cut back the hardy geraniums that I have because apparently you get like a second flush on them so about a week ago these looked amazing if you've seen them in previous garden videos so I'm going to give them another couple of days and I'm going to trim them deadhead them and see if I can get another flush one of my goals with this border was to get fullness and height and I think by adding in, so this part is a bit more shady, so I popped in some like extra, extra heucheras. I have a climber that's Clematis Winter Beauty, so I'm hoping in winter that will look good. Hydrangea Runaway Bride. I've noticed that I'm starting to get, I don't know if you can see, pink and blue blooms. This was white last year, so obviously with whatever's happening in the soil, I think the pH can change it. So it's starting to get like a pinky blue kind of tinge to the petals. I actually just deadheaded the roses today but if you go back to previous videos this one is a yellow one and this one is a lovely pink one and I've been doing loads of mulching this year with the horse poop <laughs> for the roses and you can see this one is doing well. I normally only get a couple of blooms off this but I've been trying to deadhead more and I gave it a good feed as well so this border has lots of progress in it. Okay, welcome to the back. So if you remember my like earlier in the video, this was the rectangle square. <laughs> it's grown so much. Sunflowers, remember? Teeny tiny. Now I have to admire them from the uh, window upstairs. So um, dahlias are starting to open. Actually, I got a couple more open today. Like I love the look at this i don't know what the names of these are because i just put them in the ground <laughs> so i don't know what they are but i'm sure you could use one of those like plant identifier app thingies and um, random sunflower as well growing in here so i just have one or two that is coming up kind of slowly but i'm like do you know what the slower they come up the longer i'll have them for like they might start to blossom like around august time the snapdragons are starting to fill out so these are nice as cut flowers so they're starting to fill out nothing in this um not sure what i'm going to do with this yet but all the spring bulbs have gone i love these seed heads like how cool are they and then some flowers need to be admired from over here <laughs> i just love how cheerful they are so over here all of the pots that were once spring bulbs are now in full daily bloom. I have loads of bees as well. I don't know if you can 
see or hear the bees buzzing. Actually, the bees love these ones as well. I noticed there was a couple of them. I tried to get dahlias that were a mix of like open fronted ones like this and then pom pom ones because I don't think the pom pom ones are as good for bees compared to the open fronted ones. There we are, there's a prime example. <laughs> Um, one of the bees on them. I don't think I've, there's a couple of strawberries there. Did much better this year on strawberries. And also I noticed I have some tomatoes starting. Hang on, let me zoom. There we are. I've been trying to, apparently if bumblebees pollinate your tomato plants, it's better if the bumblebees do it. I don't know where I read that, you'll have to fact check me. And then the greenhouse, I just have the geraniums, pelagoniums in here. It's looking a bit messy because I had an incident where a bird flew in and I had to rescue it from Blondie. So that was an event, but the bird is out, all is good. I just need to put back my little trinkets that were sitting on the pot. So yeah, the pelagoniums absolutely love it in here. It is very warm in here and it's very humid as well. So yeah, that's all I have in here at the moment in summertime. And yeah, some of my geraniums were getting a bit leggy. So I've been trying to kind of deadhead them and just clip them back. So now for this border, which I think I'm just like, this was nothing. This was absolutely nothing in March at the start of this video and look at it now. This is some verbena. I actually had this in pots, put it in here and it's just after f like filling out lovely foliage as well when it finishes flowering. That's another variety of verbena. There's a bit of catmint hidden in there as well. Um, magnolia twig, <laughs> starting to get some leaves, looking good. I do have a wonky lupin though. I don't know if this is, it's been very dry, very dry. So I don't know if this is from underwatering or overwatering. I watered it yesterday and I watered it today. Like those ones seem to have strong, sturdy stems. Whereas these lads, they're on the flop. They don't seem to have much in them. So I'm like, could that be underwatering? I don't know. I'll keep my eye on it anyway. But yeah, floppy lupins. Let me know if you have suffered from it too. More of a bean. I have some self-seeded ones over there pond so the grasses that's in the pond are starting to grow up and it's just giving me loads of height I've another grass here there's a grass in the back that apparently grows like later there's not much sign of it it's in the back here this grass here no sign of action on it yet but we'll see so hardy geraniums doing great can't wait to divide these next year and then I can pop some of them in the front to fill up more of the gaps and then there in the back my woodland area needs a bit of love um just needs like a tidy some wild seed actually do you know what's in this seed paper from bookmarks that i made the leftover seed paper so i don't know what these are probably like some sort of wildflower mix this brunner my favorite like this plant or planted it last year it started to come up and flower literally March until like end of May and the foliage is lovely so I want to kind of add to this tidy it up, take out some of the trinkets, more bug hotels. So yeah, I kind of want to give this a bit more love. And then this seating area, it's actually getting hot again and the sun has come out so I'll have to put up the parasol for Miss Blondie. But plenty of evening and a morning is spent with my cup of tea sitting there. So this is where I am at and I still have loads of things I want to do and I still have loads of plants that I've killed and yeah. So going forward I'm hoping that next year I will be able to do a lot of divisions and propagating. So. I won't be able, I hopefully won't have to buy as much plants and perennials like I did this year. I was kind of strategic and I spent my money on perennials when I was shopping and planted them with the anticipation like to divide them. So the likes of hardy geraniums, my neighbour is very good at like dividing them, he has no fear. Um, and then some of the other ones that I got that have like a bit of height, I can kind of add them to the back and take from the back and add to the front. So hopefully autumn time bit of division i did that last year my neighbor gave me some people divide in spring 
and plant. But what I noticed is when I put new plants into the border and let them die back, it's like the roots settled over winter and then they came up strong in summer. That might be different for everyone. Also, my growing zone is, I think it's eight or nine, very mild. So in winter, the past two winters, like your coldest day, well, there wasn't a lot of ground frost. So you're looking at like the coldest could be one or two, but generally the daytime was like eight, nine. Um, March started to warm up as well. Um, yeah, I had a good like mid to high teens in March. Yeah, the winter isn't too bad. Like when I look back at that, uh, winter section of the garden where we were doing the hard, hard landscape and like I remember just in, in a tracky where we had it wasn't that cold so I think it was like 10 degrees that day so that's pretty mild for December it's very rare we get a harsh snow um we did get a little bit of snow I think back in February it lasted about 20 minutes <laughs> and that was it I wanted to share just my progress to see it's just nice for me to look back to it and be, look back on and be like, oh, well done, girl. Um, but also as inspiration to yourself because I think sometimes gardening can be overwhelming and you might not know like where to start, where to begin. And maybe you just have a few containers or a border like I did in the front that was small and you just expand to it. And I think don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle, you know? Um, I love watching Gardener's World and I love watching Laura from Garden Answer as well. And I love how they share the process of their garden and how it evolves. Um, I think sometimes you can see like show gardens and these manicured perfect gardens when you're out rambling, especially in like fancy cut like castles and places when I'm off rambling. And um, yeah, I think home gardens, they're always evolving and changing and things die off and you get the odd crispy leaf and weeds. My garden journey, I think I've upped my game, but I've so much more to learn. And another thing, um, my best tip is, just learn by planting into your soil and seeing how it goes. Propagate, get stuck in, see what's growing in your neighbor's garden. There's always people who will say, oh, you should do this and like, you should do that. And why don't you do this? And I'm like, it's your garden, it's your land. Put plants in the soil and see what happens. You learn. So when you accidentally kill a plant, but then it comes back in spring, like you can move things around. Um, it doesn't have to kind of be too permanent. Like this is a sunflower bed, but it might not be that next year. It can be anything nature wants, although it probably will end up being a sunflower bed again because all them seed heads. I don't know what happened this year, that just happened. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very much a you do you gardener. Now on that subject, I did mention, I think two weekend videos ago about people sharing their gardens with me and um, so that I could then share them on my thing. So I was looking into like a Google form, but if people send videos, I think the file sizes can bulk up quite quickly and there's no space on the Google Drive. So I think I might do pictures and maybe for members, because there's only a couple of members in the community they could send videos and then everyone else could send pictures and then that way the Google Drive isn't getting too full and I can share some a combo of pictures and then maybe some videos as well so I think that's what I'm going to do just keep an eye on my page I'll share like a community post with a link that you can click on and there'll be like a form to fill in and then you can add your photos I can feel the heat on my feet it's time to get under that parasol and get into the shade. Hope you enjoyed this video. And yeah, just sharing the journey with me. Thank you for sharing the garden journey with me and popping by every Sunday to check in with me. Yeah, if you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button. And for my regulars, cheeky thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.